All right, everybody, what's up? Brian here, and this is my WWE Clash of Champions 2017 recap video for what took place tonight at Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions has just come to a, has come to come to an end, and overall, my overall thoughts on this show was I actually thought was it was a pretty good show. Um, one new champion crowned, which I was very surprised by, um, but you know it is what it is. A bit of a controversial finish to the tag team match, and some other matches that that you know uh, had you know had endings that probably some predicted right and some predicted wrong. So let's just get right into the recap. Uh, we started off with the kickoff show. Uh, there was a match between Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder. I predicted Mojo Rawley to win this one, which he did. Uh, and he so he, and he beat Zack Ryder, former friends, former tag team partners. You know, now broken up. And I figured that Mojo would win this one just based on. You know, you know he was the one that broke up the team with him and Zack Ryder. So, you know, you figure that you know he's had more while Zack Ryder was out injured. You know, he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania earlier this year. So, you know, and of course, you know, you know he wins. He wins tonight. Big victory for uh, for Mojo Rawley. Uh, now let's see how WWE builds. Upon that, upon this victory from Mojo in the coming weeks and months, heading into next year. So, uh, moving on, uh, the opening match of the Clash of Champions main show was a was the Triple Threat match for the WWE United States Championship. It was Baron Corbin defending against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. I did not expect Ziggler to win. Um, I thought Baron Corbin would have retained, or I thought that Bobby Roode was going to walk out the new champion. But in a surprise, Dolph Ziggler uh, win, won this triple threat match, defeating both Baron Corbin and Bobby Roode to win the United States title for the second time, third time. Um, so... Big victory for Ziggler. Um, I don't see him keeping it long, you know, but you never know. He might keep it a long time. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Corbin, after the match, uh, made it very clear that he's going to be gunning for that U.S. title. He will have. He does have a rematch uh, that he can, that he can uh, cash in at any time. But uh, my thoughts on this matchup. Was, I actually thought it was a pretty good triple threat match. All three guys delivered in this matchup. Uh, Ziggler won with a with the zigzag on Baron Corbin, who was going to uh, try to hit the end of days on Bobby Roode. But Ziggler, being the veteran that he is, uh, when Corbin went to hit the end of days, snuck up behind and hit the zigzag on Corbin and pinned him one, two, three. And that was pretty much it. So congratulations to Dolph Ziggler on becoming the new United States champion. Um, let's see what else. Um, we had the Fatal 4-Way uh, for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Uh, this one had very um, different rules to a normal Fatal 4-Way tag match where all four members of one, of each t one member of each team, uh, there would be four guys in the ring, and if you did not see this match, this matchup I thought was very impressive, a very great showing by all four teams. Uh, a lot of action in this one. You know, it started off with, like I said, four guys in the ring, one member of each team, you know, and then they could only tag their, uh, their own teammates. Uh, so that made it very interesting. But, you know, you know, Chad Gable was very impressive in this match. Rusev was very impressive in this match. You know, the Usos, of course, they, 
you know, they're always impressive in matches. New Day as well, Aiden English, you know, Shelton Benjamin. So hats off to all four teams. But in the end, it was the Usos scoring the win and retaining their SmackDown Tag Team titles. So congratulations go out to them. But hats off to all four teams on putting on an exciting match. I mean, like I said, this was a, a very action-packed match. But one of the best high spots of this matchup had to be for Chad Gable. You know, he was hitting German suplexes. He hit one on Rusev. He nearly broke Aiden Eng looked like he nearly broke Aiden English's neck with a German suplex. He picked up uh he picked up Big E for a um he rammed him into the turnbuckle into the one of the corners of the ring and then German suplex tip uh floated over and German suplexed him, which was very impressive. Shelton Benjamin hit a uh, at the beginning of the match hit a top rope uh, move to one of the Usos. You know, of course, New Day, very, like I said, you know, they did some very good, you know, impressive things in this matchup as well. And so did the Usos, and that's what helped the Usos retain their tag team titles. So, like I said, hats off to all four teams. If you did not see that match, I would recommend checking that match out. But I thought it was actually a really good match. Um... One of the, the next match that we had was Charlotte Flair defending the SmackDown Women's title against Natalia in a Lumberjack match with all the, the SmackDown Women's division around the ring. Um, basically, it was uh, the Riot Squad, Naomi and Carmella, Tamina, and Lana surrounding the ring. Basically, this was, you know, this was what you would expect from a Lumberjack match. You know, Natalia would throw Charlotte out of the ring. They would attack the, the uh, like, Lana, Tamina, Carmella, and the Riot Squad. They went after uh, Charlotte, and then they would beat her up. Basically, it broke down near the end of the match where all the women got involved. Uh, one point, at one point, Carmella even teased that he, she was going to cash in money in the bank. But before she could even do anything, Ruby Riot... Um, not um, went after her before she could cash in, and basically it came down to all the other women fought to the back. Uh, Natalia took advantage of on on Charlotte, threw her back in the ring after ramming her into the into the post. Went to look to go for the sharpshooter, and then Charlotte countered into the figure eight, and Natalia tapped out. Therefore, Charlotte is still your SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, after the match, they uh, interviewed Natalia in the ring. And I don't know if she was teasing that she's re she's retiring or what have you, but she, she was like, oh, that, you know, I've g that she's given the WWE Universe for 10 years, you know, some of the great matches of her life some of the best matches of her life, and they've turned their back on her. The women have turned their, the other women in the division have turned their back on her. So she's going to turn their, turn her back on them and all of the WWE Universe. What does that mean? I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see what happens Tuesday night on SmackDown. Um, but my thought on the match, I didn't think it was a very, like, I thought... If they didn't have the lumberjack mat, lumberjacks around the ring, I thought it could have been a better match. But you know, it is what it is. Um, in a no surprise, who wins? Who won this one match? It was the Bludgeon Brothers defeating Breezango. Um, WWE has done has been doing a good job with with blood, the Bludgeon Brothers, Bowen and Harper, making them a dominant team since they gave. Uh, Redebuted on SmackDown, and it that was the case tonight. They defeated uh, Breezango in short fashion, and that was pretty much it. So no surprise there. Um, the now now the one match that I actually thought was going to be was actually pretty good, but the concept of having two referees 
I thought in the ring at the same time, I thought was dumb. Uh, it was Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Sami Zayn and, and Kevin Owens, where if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn lost this match, then they would be fired from all of WWE. Daniel Bryan, the general manager of SmackDown Live, and Shane McMahon, the commissioner of SmackDown Live, were the two special referees. And this was basically just an entire mess. You had, you know, sh every time a pinfall would be attempted, Shane and Daniel Bryan would count at the same time, and it was just basically just a mess. I mean, you know, basically I'm just going to make a long story short. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are still employed. They did not lose this match, but because Daniel Bryan fast counted after uh, Shane McMahon, while well, Sami Zayn pinned Rain, had, uh, had pinned Randy Orton, went for one, two, but then stopped at two, and, look, and then him and Daniel Bryan got into an argument, and then Sam, uh, Randy Orton went to hit the RKO on Sami Zayn, but Sami countered, rolled Randy Orton up, and Daniel Bryan fast counted one, two, three, and that was pretty much it. So, like I said, it was... It was a dumb idea for having two referees in the ring at the same time, but I'm kind of glad that Owens and Zayn won. So that continues that storyline on SmackDown heading into Tuesday night. And then uh, that brings us to the main event, which was Jinder Mahal challenging AJ Styles for the WWE Championship uh, in what I thought was actually a Pretty okay matchup, in my opinion. I thought Jinder Mahal did a very good job in this match. Uh, he went after AJ Styles. You know, he, you know, hurt AJ Styles' ribs by throwing him into the uh, con uh, that kind of uh, timekeeper uh, into the into the barricade that was exposed, and and AJ Styles went ran uh, went rib first into there and flipped over the barricade. And then that was mainly the work of Jin on, uh, that was the main point that Jinder targeted. AJ Styles softened uh, Jinder Mahal's leg, um, and that was one of the main points he was going after. And it came down to where the Singh brothers got involved, and then it looked like Jinder was going to walk out the new WWE champion. He hit the colossus on AJ Styles, but Styles kicked out, and then Jinder basically mocked AJ, looking to go for the Styles Clash. Styles got out of it and locked in the locked in the calf crusher on Jinder Mahal. Jinder tried to get to the ropes, but Styles uh, rolled through, locked it in again in the center of the ring, and Jinder had no other choice but to tap out. So AJ Styles is still the WWE Champion coming out of tonight's Clash of Champions. Um, but like I said, overall, my thoughts on tonight's event, I thought it was actually a pretty good show. I thought the triple threat, the fatal four-way match was, and the fatal four-way matches were good. I didn't really care that much for the Lumberjack match, um, and I actually thought that, that, that tag match, even though I'm glad that Owens and Zayn won, I did not care for the idea of having two referees in the ring at the same time. So, but, I, uh, you know, the other matches I thought were pretty good. I, guess I thought that Styles and Mahal did a really good job, um, a decent job at that in their championship match. But overall, my thoughts on tonight's show was I actually thought it was a pretty good show overall, except for those things that I mentioned. So, with that being said, I'm sorry if I'm rambling. If With that being said, if you guys watched tonight's Clash of Champions, let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments below. So this has been my recap of what took place at tonight's Clash of Champions event. As always, I am Brian, and thank you for watching.